Johnny Hawthorne, and we're here at the Exotic Booth at NAMM 2020 with Jeff Coleman. Jeff, thanks for coming out. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, tell me what you've been up to. Well, I've been, uh, the last two months I've been on tour with uh, Yazawa Eichon in Japan. He's a very wonderful, famous artist over there that everybody knows. And uh, two guitar band with Doug Rappaport on guitar. Nice. Yeah, Doug's a sick player. We got to get him in an exotic. Yeah. And uh, uh, doing my own thing, a couple new records in the works, and um, I'll, I'll start touring with Alan Parsons. Excellent. In uh, a couple of weeks. We have a Cosmo Squad show tomorrow night here uh, at the M13. M13, with, yeah, with, it's uh, in. Andy Timmons. Andy Timmons, one of yeah. uh, another exotic. Yeah, guy. and uh, Mike Keneally and the whole uh, Frank Zappa alumni. Yeah. And Joe Travers. And, Anyway, so we have that, and then next weekend, Cosmo Squad at the Big Potato. Starting January 31st, it's the Alan Parsons, like, all year we're going. Excellent. You know, um, Italy, Spain, Germany, France. And Last year was, you know, Tel Aviv, Turkey, wow. Russia. So a lot of exotic locations. And uh, you did some shows with Glenn Hughes? Yeah, we did... Uh, you know, Deep Purple Classic Live. So nice. I get my Richie Blackmore on. And, you know, I've been, I've been playing with Glenn on and off. I produced a record for him in 2003, Songs of the Key of Rock. And so every couple of years, we just kind of come back into each other's lives, you know? Yeah. So I'll see him in April on a cruise ship. We're doing the Moody Blues Cruise with oh, Alan. Excellent. And Glenn will be on there with his guitar player, Soren Anderson. Oh, I know Soren, yeah. He's and we'll probably uh, get up and do a little, you know, uh, I can't remember the Deep Purple songs right now. <laughs> Burn or... Burn or, uh, yeah. Highway Star. Highway Star. Highway Star to dual guitar. Yes. Yeah. Doodly, doodly, doodly. All right. Yeah. Uh, tell me what uh, exotic pedals you're using on your board now. So I have two boards. Um, the, the main one I've been using that uh, Free the Tone built for me. And really, you know, recently I did a, a Japanese uh, interview with a magazine, Young Guitar. And they and part of the thing was they asked the question, uh, what Japanese pedals do you use and why do you like them? And half of my board is free of the tone, and half of my board is exotic of my main pedal board. And so on that board I use the um, SP uh, compressor, the EP boost. Sometimes I'll use uh, one or the other for my clean sound or just a fat and lead tone. Right. And then I also use the RC boost for the effects loop. Right. As I mentioned to you, it takes away the mosquito tone. You know? Yeah. I always feel like rhythmically, I want, you know, my version of an Eddie Van Halen tone. I've got kind of got it's 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 bitey. But then the lead tone I want creamy, more like Brian May. Right. So when I when I hit that RC boost through the effects loop, it's just like it boosts my solos. And it's just it's like a warm, fuzzy blanket. Um, so you don't use it as a leave-on pedal? It's more or less... Well, so now, as you know, I asked you, I need one that I leave on all the time just to get to make it sound better and then one to boost me up even louder. Okay. And you know what I learned from Michael Landau is you need, like, a few levels of gain over the band. You know, it's one thing to... It's one thing to have a little bit of volume boost. Yeah. And like I tell Greg Cock, dude, you got to turn up. Yeah. Your fucking organ player's too loud. Yeah. You know, you, you have to be able to get on top of the band, even if you're playing dynamically soft. And Mike's the master of it. Yeah. So I, I go into a gig with like two or three exotic boosts just in case. Oh, yeah. there's a little more. There's a little more, you know? Yeah. It's still like different degrees of, uh, and then you can mix it up and. Yeah, and, stuff it's, like and that. it's gain stages and there's some things that happen. And uh, I just built a secondary pedal board that I use with a different rig that's more of the wet-dry setup. And it's all analog, there's no switching system. And uh, the first two things on the board that the guitar plugs into is the super sweet and the super clean. The, yeah, excellent pedal. Yeah, and I have an old Wagner amp that, it's an old Marshall that Reinhold and I call the War Horse that I stole from George Lynch because he owed the studio money. Yeah. And then uh, he doesn't know that, so George, forget I said that. And then I revoiced it with Reinhold like 25 years ago to my liking. Wow. But I plugged in those pedals with the clean channels. Like, oh my God, it just came to life like, you know, ridiculous. Killer, man. So it's been pretty life changing, you know. Uh, 
That's kind of a long answer for what no, you have. No, 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 that's fine, that's fine. <laughs> but I mean, what exotic means to me is I feel like it helps me bring out my down, dynamic range. There you go. And brings out the best in my playing. It makes me feel comfortable. Yes. Like those pedals, I don't hear compression, but I feel this nice bloom and this warmth to the notes without hearing compression. Yeah. I don't want to hear compression. I want to feel it. Yeah. You know? Excellent. Yeah. Well, thanks for uh, so much for uh, coming by the booth and saying hi. And uh, check out Jeff Coleman on his many different projects. And we'll talk to you guys later.